In a recent video, we showed you how to replace our propane detector, and we did it a little differently than we have in the past. And that is, in real time, actually doing all of the work while the camera was rolling and very, very minimal editing to show you how quick and easy it is to do that kind of a job. Well, we're gonna do the same thing again today. We're gonna to be replacing our gray valve. Now, if you're wondering how we know our gray valve needs to be replaced, after you've been out dry camping or boondocking for a bit and you take the cap off, if water comes out of there, one of your two valves, either your gray valve or your black valve, needs to be replaced because those are supposed to seal completely and nothing should come out. Now, the trick is knowing which valve it is, and that's mostly up to your nose and your eyes a little bit. Obviously, the water from the black tank, which comes from the toilet, is going to be darker and smell worse. And the water coming from the gray tank is going to be lighter colored, really grayish in color usually. And it's going to smell bad, but not it's not toxic waste. It's not as disgusting as having black water come out. Now, I'm going to try and do the exact same thing here, which is in real time, right in front of you, I'm going to do this job. It's really that easy, I think. I've actually never done this before. This is the original gray valve that came on our motorhome 14 plus years ago, and it's never leaked before. But recently, each time we open it, a little bit more gray water is behind the cap here, and that's been a sign it's getting worse. We've also had some leaking around the handle here too. So what we've done to get ready for today is a couple of things. First, we've emptied the black and the gray tank. Now the black valve is gonna stay closed throughout this. I didn't actually have to empty it, but I thought just in case anything were to go wrong, like I were to catch a tool on the valve and open the black valve, I thought I didn't wanna have that kind of blooper reel going on here. So we've emptied the black tank, we've completely emptied the gray tank, everything is emptied out and ready to replace the valve. All I need to do this job, really, it's so simple, is I'm gonna wear gloves for this. So I've got a couple of gloves that I'm gonna put on here. It's not sanitary, even the gray water isn't something you wanna handle. So this is for sanitary purposes and to protect me while I'm working. Just in case there's any leakage going on, I have a sponge, I've got a couple of paper towels ready, just in case there's probably gonna be a little bit that's going to leak out of here. Even though the tank's empty, when we remove this, there's gonna be some dripping. So we also have a couple of tools. So on the front and rear of this valve, we've got four screws we need to take out, one in each corner of this little square section here in the pipe. And we have the correct size wrenches for that. We also have the correct size sockets. Some of this is difficult to get a socket on and I'll have to use an open end or box wrench. Some of it I can get the socket on, but this should be really straightforward. Now, the last thing I need, of course, is a replacement gray valve. This is a direct replacement. And we found that whenever we replace parts, unless we're looking to upgrade to some new feature, the easiest thing to do is to get exactly the same thing you took out, because most of the time, that's gonna make it super easy to put in a replacement. It's the same size, the same design, and if all goes well, this valve is just gonna slide right in where the old one came out. If I run into problems here, you're gonna find out because we're gonna try and do this straight through. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen these screws right here, loosen these bolts. And the way we're gonna do that, make sure you know that you're doing lefty loosey and righty tighty. We're going to put our box wrench on here. Loosen the first one, make sure that's, yep, whoop, that came right off of there. Okay, let's do the same thing in the back. Let's do the back corner next. Uh, sometimes it's hard to see down here, so you gotta kinda crawl around a little bit. These are not particularly, not particularly tight. They're just a little awkward to get to from sitting in front, and I'm trying not to block the camera too, so. That should come off of there now. There we go. There's the second one. That nut's removed. 
and this comes with new bolts. But uh, we'll make sure we don't get rid of the old ones, just in case. We're going to keep track of these nuts here, just in case they're not in there. Okay, let's get the next one off. We'll do this one right here next. I have a combination box and open-end wrench. Doesn't matter which one I put on here. Okay, and we're going to... Oh, Got to loosen that a little bit more. Okay, there we go. That's rolling freely. Get that nut off the back. So there's three out of four. The last one, I cannot get the socket in from the front. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put the smaller socket on the back here. See if I can get the socket wrench in the back. Okay, and always make sure, righty tighty, lefty loosey. If you accidentally don't have this in the right direction and you get upside down somewhere and you go the wrong way, you could try and tighten it instead of loosen it. And you could end up stripping that. So always make sure you've got it in the right direction. Now oh, that loosened right up too. These are not particularly difficult to get off of here. Just a little awkward, that's all. Don't quite have that one yet. Let's go a little further. It's always hard to figure out exactly how loose it needs to be with the wrench before you can do it with your fingers. Use the right size wrench here. Oh, it's this one. There we go. Oh, I see water is starting to drip out of here, so I know that it's getting loosened up, and I'm ready with my sponge just in case. Okay, this is all getting very loose here. Let's get that last nut off. There, so I've got the last nut off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my tools out of the way here because I don't want them to get wet with gray water if this drops a lot of water when I take this out of here. So now I'm gonna pull out each of these four bolts. Out they come. And you can see the whole thing is really flopping loose already. The back section already came off. Okay, let's get this one out of here. There we go, that's three out of the four bolts out, and there's the last one. So we're gonna set those aside also. And now we're going to slightly flex apart. You can see there's room here for this to flex. And as soon as I flex this apart, that should allow the valve to drop out. Pull on that gently, push it in both directions. You don't wanna force it, and there we go. And sure enough, there's our old gray valve. And this one has been leaking both out the handle and through the blade valve. So we're gonna replace that. So let's just drop that one in the garbage, get rid of that, and let's just keep this gray water from spreading here, very little. Okay, and now, let's use a paper towel here to try and keep gray water from getting all over the place. All right, now let's open up our new valve. I haven't even taken this out of the package yet. Okay. Let's open this up. And what we're gonna find in here are four new bolts. There we go. Four brand new bolts, and we'll go ahead and use the new ones. Okay, we've got four new nuts. We'll go ahead and use those. So I'm going to set all the old ones outside. We'll keep those as spares. We like to keep a lot of spare nuts and bolts, screws, washers, and other parts around. Those we will keep, even though we didn't keep the old valve. Those are perfectly good nuts and bolts. Use those some other time. Nice wide flange on those. So now you'll see we have our new valve. And what we have are gaskets, seals, actually, on both sides. And these seals need to be put in here. This is going to go in here, nicely set in there, and here, this goes in here. Now, before we put this in, we wanna make sure the old ones are out of there. I'm gonna use my wrist here to push, put pressure against the outlet valve here, and I'm gonna pull on the inlet valve with my left hand. You can see I'm spreading this to open this up. I don't want to push on this without having this open enough for it to easily and safely get in. I don't want to scrape those seals along the opening. I want to put them in and there we go. You'll notice this will rotate freely around here. 
That is in there real well. Let's just double check this. Make sure it's in there. Yep, that's seated real nicely. This is the most important part. You want to make sure that those seals are seated in there correctly. So now we're going to take our square piece over here and line it up with this piece here. Get this all lined up because those bolts are going to have to go back through there and they're going to come in from the front just like they were before. Get one in first, line everything up. And once the first one and the second one are lined up, the rest should go. And I'm going to do the diagonal ones opposing each other if I can. We'll put, we'll put this piece right here on second. Let's get all four of these through here. There we go. One more to go. This could be the challenge here. There we go. This one is the hardest to reach for sure. There we go. Now all four of them are sticking through there. And now we're going to take, we're going to see if we can hold all four of them at the same time. And we're going to take the backing plastic piece and put that over the four of them. All four of them. Awesome. Now we're going to start each nut one at a time. And once those are on there, we're almost done already. This is a piece of cake. I think this might end up being easier than our propane replacement. Okay, let's just get these last two nuts on here because that is the last, should be the last tricky part here. Not that any of this is particularly tricky. There we go. Got the third nut started. And let's get this last one. We could pull this out of the way if we need to. We, that helps. All right, I'm gonna get this started. Once this nut is finger tight on here, literally all we have to do, we're gonna take our wrenches, tighten that down. You see, I got this nice socket with this knurled handle on it. That makes it easier to get started. I'm not gonna tighten any of these down yet. What I wanna do is get all four of them part way tightened in. We don't want to tighten one. It's kind of like when you tighten a wheel on a car or an RV, when you put new, new tires on, you don't want to tighten one down until you've gotten them all kind of started. All right. Again, we'll use our knurled top of our nice uh, socket wrench here. Makes it easier. And we'll tighten it just a little bit. Okay, and now we're gonna do that last one. Now that last one is a tricky one. I can't put the socket on from the front. That's why I bought the, brought the other size socket and open end wrench along. Now I've got to put the socket on the back. All right, so let's get this box wrench on the front. There we go. Very awkward position here. Other than that, it's not too bad. We're going to begin to tighten these down now. We'll start with this one. While I'm back here and I've got this difficult position in place. I already got my arm in there. I might as well go ahead and tighten this one. And even though I've got a fairly large socket wrench here, we do not want to tighten the heck out of these. We don't want to torque down on this too hard. Don't wail away on it. You're talking about plastic parts here. That should be plenty. All right, now we're going to switch back to our other socket and our other open end and box wrench here. And now we'll go over here. Again, not too tight. Don't get carried away here. All right, let's do the same thing here. Okay. Not too tight, just firm. And we got one more to do. That's this back one back here. That one's kind of hard for me to see, so I'm going to put the, the box wrench on there. It stays on there better. All right, and... go. Oh, tough angle here. Okay, and I'm just going to double check. Just going to double check the first one that I tightened there. Just want to make sure that that is still fairly firm. 
Okay. Yeah, that one's just a little loose. Tightening down the other three probably is going to allow this one to now be a little tighter. That tightened up a fair amount, so I'm going to do the same thing on this one here. Because that tightened up a little more than I was, would have expected. Let's go back. Here we go. Let's not let that skip. And we'll do the very last one here. Oh, that's plenty tight. So now we're just going to make sure this opens and closes smoothly. Oh, that's nice. Now, what'll really be nice is next time we come from a dry camping trip and we're out boondocking and we open this to dump the tank, if we don't get any water in here at all. But, oh, that works beautifully smoothly. So that's all there is to it. I don't know how long that took. I'm gonna say 15 minutes or so. I think if you weren't filming this and you had even done it once before, you probably could do this in less than 10 minutes easily. I want to thank you all for coming and watching us do this. If you like this and like this style of video, uh, leave a comment down below and tell us if you have any questions about this, maybe something I didn't cover here or a problem you had that I didn't and so I didn't address, leave a comment. But uh, other than that, that's all there is to it. Done. It's as simple as that to replace your gray valve. This is something that will probably have to be done on every RV at some point or another. I'm really happy that ours lasted 14 years, 14 and a half, and didn't need it. I hope it goes another 14, and I hope that black valve goes even longer because that's not as nice. Anyway, thank you all for joining us. Safe travels, and thanks for watching.